Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. Sennheiser has a whole line of premium sound bars and they just released an entry level version called the Ambio Soundbar Mini. It is still priced at a higher premium than many other sound bars like it, but it also sounds a lot better. And we're gonna take a closer look at what this is all about in just a second, but I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Sennheiser. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this soundbar is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $7.99 for the soundbar by itself. There's also a bundle where they include the Ambio subwoofer for $13.99. They did send over the subwoofer, which we'll take a look at in a few minutes. Now this is designed for a smaller room. So if you have a larger living room or something, some of the other more robust sound bars that they offer are probably what you're gonna wanna get. But again, for a smaller environment, like an apartment or a small bedroom or something, this will work out, I think, pretty well. My one reservation about it is that it doesn't have much in the way of audio inputs, especially for home theater use. So this relies on your television's audio return channel, or ARC. And what you have to do is plug this in to your TV's ARC labeled HDMI input. You're not gonna see anything on the screen when you plug this in, but all of your television's audio will get sent out through the HDMI cable and into the soundbar once you have it all configured. One thing you might need to do on your television is set that HDMI port for pass-through so it gets the raw data. So you might have to jump into your TV settings and adjust things a little bit. I found when I first hooked this up, I had to reboot everything, my Apple TV, in order to get this properly detected so I could get the Dolby Atmos audio. Now to get technical for a minute here, this does support the EARC format, which is on newer televisions. And as such, this is going to support on those newer TVs some of the lossless home theater audio formats like Dolby True HD Atmos and DTSX, but your television has to support EARC for those audio formats to get passed through. Now, if your TV does not have EARC, it will support compressed audio formats that are most likely on your 4K Blu-ray disc in addition to the lossless ones. And it will also work with Dolby Atmos audio coming out of streaming services like Netflix and Disney+. Plus. I was able to successfully get those working off of my older ARC-equipped television upstairs. So it's not a total loss here. Um, and it will, I think, for most consumers, allow you to enjoy the full range of audio that's coming from popular streaming services. But if you got the EARC and you've got a 4K Blu-ray player, you'll get the best audio working out of here. Unfortunately, I do not own an EARC television, believe it or not, so I was not able to test those lossless formats, but the specs say that it is compatible. Additionally, you can bring audio in via Chromecasting or through Bluetooth or through AirPlay 2. So it supports most of the popular devices out there for delivering audio to the soundbar wirelessly. Just note though that over Bluetooth, it uses the SBC codec, which is the most compressed, and the Apple devices will use AAC. So your audio is not gonna be as clear and crisp out of the wireless delivery options as it might be over the cable out of an EARC connection. Beyond that, you've got your power cable here, the USB port is not used for anything. They say it's used for updates or to power other devices. It'll output a one amp of USB power if you need it. And there's a button here for resetting the soundbar if you need to do that. Setup was very easy. You do have to connect it up to your Wi-Fi to get the most out of it. Because it doesn't have any kind of on-screen display, the app is what you're going to want to spend some time in to troubleshoot things and to make sure your audio settings are correct. And that's something that you'll do when you set everything up. Additionally, when you set it up, it will also bounce sound off your walls and configure itself to give you the most immersive audio environment when it gets going. And overall, the setup took maybe about 10 minutes or so. It wasn't hard, it was pretty much plug it in and follow the prompts after it gets on your Wi-Fi. Now inside, it's got six speakers. It runs at 250 watts total RMS. Four of the speakers are full range drivers. Two of them are cone drivers. 
and it covers 43 hertz to 20 kilohertz insofar as the sound that it can generate. The subwoofer, which is a separate item, is 350 watts, and it has an 8-inch subwoofer on board. It'll run from 27 hertz to 80 hertz. And having used this by itself and then with the subwoofer, it obviously will sound better uh, when you have the subwoofer attached because it will be able to cover audio ranges that are lower than this speaker can achieve. So how does it sound? Well, one of the challenges in reviewing speakers on YouTube is that I can't demonstrate for you what it sounds like, so I'm going to do my best to describe it. What I did is I ran this in two different rooms, one upstairs in my bedroom where I've got vaulted ceilings, and also down here in my studio in a much smaller space. In each case, I had the soundbar run its uh, little calibration so it could figure out the size of the room that it was in. And in both cases, I was very impressed with the immersive quality of the audio. What I did to test it is I played a bunch of Star Wars movies from Disney Plus that run in Dolby Atmos. And in each instance, I was very much pleased with how the sound seemed to come from all over. It's not quite as good as having a home theater system with speakers discreetly placed in different parts of the room, but this certainly came close and a lot closer than many of the other sound bars that I've reviewed in the past. Where it falls a little bit short is when you've got a very noisy scene where the scene is trying to put some stuff behind you. It kind of gets meshed together when you've got a lot of noise in a particular scene. You lose a little bit of that immersion. But certainly in quieter scenes, it does a very nice job of giving you the sense that you've got speakers all over your room. And even in the noisier environments, when things do tend to step on each other a little bit more, it's still much more immersive than some of the cheaper sound bars that I've looked at. So from a price to performance perspective here, it definitely is, I think, worth the price that they are charging for it, especially if you don't want to go through the complexity of setting up a home theater system with speakers located all over your room. Now, adding the subwoofer does help things out quite a bit. It does take some of the lower end load off of the speaker in addition to playing frequencies of sound that the speaker is not capable of. The nice thing with the subwoofer is that it does connect wirelessly it connects over Bluetooth, and it uses the uh, LC3 codec, which is a higher quality audio codec. So you do get better quality running wirelessly to that subwoofer. And although the subwoofer does have an input on it, this particular soundbar only communicates with the subwoofer over that Bluetooth connection. Additionally, you can connect up to four subwoofers to this soundbar, which I think is a bit of overkill, but you can do it if you want but I think the one subwoofer is enough and it will certainly add a lot more punch to the films and other things that you're watching on your soundbar here. Now, as far as music is concerned, it will attempt to upmix stereo sound into something more room filling and immersive. It does have some controls on the remote here to adjust the quality of the audio in the lower section here. You've got a music mode, for example, along with a more neutral uh, sound if you want to keep it closer to the original. But for music, it's probably not the best choice, primarily because it doesn't have a direct input for plugging in a high quality audio source. So you're going to be dealing with a lot of audio compression, either from the service that you're using from your TV box, for example, or through uh, the connections that you might make over Bluetooth or AirPlay. So I think for music lovers, you'll probably want to get something a little more robust that has more input options. All right, let's take a look at this thing now in operation. I have it connected up to a Roku television, and that TV is tuned to Disney Plus and is outputting Atmos audio out of its ARC port back to the soundbar. And if we look on the top of the soundbar, you'll see that the Dolby Atmos light is lit up, which indicates that it is receiving Atmos audio and decoding it. And when things are operating here, you can control the soundbar via your TV remote control, at least in so far as volume is concerned, or via the app here for adjusting more of its settings. Additionally, they do have that remote control that it comes with that allows you to make some adjustments as well. Volume control will almost certainly work through your TV remote, so you may not need this remote all that often if you just want to adjust volume, but you can adjust some of the audio presets here down at the bottom. You can also switch between sources. So if you were listening to music from your phone 
and you want to go and watch a movie, you can hit the source button to switch out of the phone and back to the HDMI. Additionally, you're going to see a night button here. This reduces the base and makes you kind of a better neighbor, if you will. Um, but I think for most private listening, attaching up some headphones is the better way to go for that. And voice mode here will activate a dialogue enhancer. So if you're having trouble hearing dialogue in a movie, it will pick that dialogue out and make it uh, more audible to you. The Ambio button here will disable some of the Ambio's active processing of the scene to uh, maybe reduce that feature if it's not sounding too good to you. And then if you jump over to the app here, you get a lot of the same options, but with a little more ability to adjust things in a fine-tuned fashion. So as you can see here, our uh, app is reporting that we are decoding a Dolby Atmos source. Ambio is enabled. I can turn that off here if I want. It does impact the sound a bit. It's doing less processing, so you may want to play around with that to see what works best for you. One thing I enjoyed quite a bit was playing the Ambio demo experience. They've got a bunch of different options here that you can choose to see how immersive the sound can be in your environment if you don't have any Dolby Atmos sources to play around with. So that might be fun to play with when you first get going with it. Additionally, you've got a bunch of presets here for different audio types. Those are on the remote as well. But if you jump into the app, you can actually adjust what each of those presets sound like. You have a bit of an EQ here, not a full one, but you can adjust some of the fine tuning of each of these modes and have those save into the Ambio so you can adjust things on the fly based on what you are consuming. I've been leaving mine mostly on neutral, which is sounding good to me, but your mileage may vary. Here is your button for night mode and voice enhancement. And what I want to do is go over here to settings because you do have a lot more options here. Network obviously is your Wi-Fi settings if you need to adjust those. You can go in and make some changes to how the center volume works, for example. So in addition to that dialogue enhancer, you can enhance the center channel a bit more to make that dialogue uh, more audible, especially in Atmos and surround sound movies. You can also adjust your subwoofer settings in here as well. Uh, if we jump over to the input section here, you can adjust lip syncing if things seem out of whack to you there. So that might be something worth looking at. Under codec, this is actually helpful for digging a little deeper into what your system is currently decoding. As you can see here, currently we are getting a Dolby Digital Atmos uh, audio signal. If we had the EARC and we had a lossless format, we would see that uh, indicated on here. And we have the ability to make some adjustments to the loudness. And also it has some dynamic range controls as well. So you can really dig in deeper here on the app than you can on the remote control. And these features have a little more substance on some of their higher end units that have more speakers and thus more ability to adjust things in a finer tuned fashion. Got some other things on here like your user interface for turning the LEDs on and off. You also can manage your firmware and a few of the other things here as well. And of course, there are ways to set up some of your additional services like the Chromecast or Tidal or AirPlay. AirPlay, I found, kind of works out of the box. Google Chromecast, I did have to attach the soundbar to my Google Home app in order for that to get up and running. So who is this for? Well, like I mentioned at the outset, this is really designed for smaller rooms. And in those smaller rooms, I think you will be impressed with the level of immersion that this device can bring, especially for movies and TV shows that have Atmos soundtracks. And it works great with what you're going to get out of most streaming services plugged into most common TVs. That is, I think, the target market here. I do wish it had more input options. I also think it sounds a heck of a lot better when the subwoofer is plugged in. But compared to your TV speakers, this is going to be a major, major upgrade in a small space, even without the subwoofer. So you might want to consider getting this on its own. If it's not punchy enough for you, then maybe consider the subwoofer. The only issue is that you have to buy the Sennheiser subwoofer with this thing because there's no other way to connect anything to it beyond that wireless connection to that Sennheiser sub. So I wish it had more input options. I wish we had more options for subwoofers. But if you don't mind getting sucked into an ecosystem, Sennheiser sound bars are superb. And this one, at the lower end of their product offering, delivers a great experience in smaller rooms. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, 
Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.